Welcome back. In the last uh, video, I talked about Pinto's user programs. And I mentioned that in order for us to be able to support user programs, uh, we need to uh, do two major things. Uh, the first thing we need to do is to uh, support the notion of a process. Uh, we have to manage a process. Uh, that is creation, create a process, um, uh, schedule a process, uh, exit a process, uh, reap the weight on a process, and all these operations we, are, we need to perform on a process. Um, in order to create a process or launch a process, we need to first uh, load it load it into memory and set up its address space. So setup of its address space is needed. Uh, when we want when we actually launch the process, create schedule schedule involves launching the process. So when we launch the process, we need to pass arguments to it. So let's take a look at what it takes to uh, what what Pintos's take on a process is, so that we can actually implement uh, implement all the aspects of a process. Uh, the The important thing to know is uh, in Pintos is a process is really a user level abstraction. Because what the what the operating system for us, the kernel, implements a process using a kernel thread. Which means that there is really only a kernel thread structure. We don't have what we normally think of a process control block. For us, a process control block is really a thread control block. In, in Pintos, that's simply a data structure, a structure called struct thread. Okay. So, uh, so every process has a single thread associated with it. Uh, so there are when when Pintos starts up, uh, we saw that in init dot c, there is uh, init dot c is where main is. And when main runs, and we'll review this in just a second, it does a bunch of initializations, initializations. And eventually, we get to a point where it does something called run actions. What run actions does, and we'll, we'll get to all the details of this, but what run actions does in turn when run actions gets executed, uh, run actions will in turn do, do its thing and it launches it calls something called a run task and it passes uh, uh, the passes what we call as the program to be launched this is the program to be launched uh, for us the very first one we will look at is uh, is uh, the task itself which is in our case the x for example it's going to be something called args none this is the simplest of them so that is the what i'm going to look at as an example so you call run task with args none so let's take a look at uh, what what all that means which means that what we're asking when we run the operating system is we want to run this task and this is the process we want to run so we just want to run one process so it turns out that that this particular routine that we call uh, let's go into Pintos and uh, let's take a look. Uh, in fact, uh, in just to kind of give you an idea, in Pinto, when we ran Pintos, uh, the test case, uh, we did something like this. We said, for example, uh, let me grab this from here. Um, so this is how I ran, ran args none, and it actually ends up running something more complicated. But for us, uh, for us, for all practical purposes, when we ran, when we said run, run test and we gave it a value, which is the, which is args none, what we are really doing eventually after it trickles completely down is we're saying run task and we're passing this to that. So that's what the operating system is doing. So let's see what, 
what in it does with what is being passed. So I'm going to go in here and I will actually show you where in it is. In it is part of the threads folder. So I'm going to go in and look at in it. Let's make it a little bigger. Um, so let's go down to where our let's search for run task and run task is right here and as i mentioned run actions uh, which is down here calls uh, as part of its functionality calls run task so let's take a look at what run task does so i'll walk you through it uh, run task is pretty straightforward in that all it's really doing is is it's going to call a function uh, a function if you will an os uh, function um, which is called process execute and passes this task so whatever you passed it gets passed there and you call process execute so in other words the operating system is calling process execute to to launch the process so it's called process execute and what process execute does in a nutshell we'll see all the details of it but what process execute does in a nutshell is it this function called process execute execute launches it creates a thread and launches uh, so let's sets up, let's call it sets, set up the address space of the process and, and, um, let's see what, it, what else it does, uh, sets up the address space, uh, puts arguments on the stack and we'll see why it puts on the stack in just a second and then does something to eventually launch the launch itself is done in the, in x86 uh, by using the x86 instruction which is a return from trap so the return from trap will will execute the will will launch it so uh, in Oh, there's a little more detail of this which we'll get to in just a second but but suffice it to say that that the os launches os routine to launch a new process is process execute Well, the users, user can, users can also launch processes. The user's routine to launch a new process is actually exec. Turns out, a side note, in Unix, we saw in Linux of all flavors of Unix, we saw that to launch a process or create a new process, we use fork and typically we use fork and then we do exec. Well, there is no fork and in Pintos, there's only exec and there are no hundred versions of it, there's only one exec. All that exec takes in Pintos uh, in, from, from the user point of view is exec takes a the task that we want to run and in our case that's simply a string which is a command for example something as simple as let's say i want to run uh, ls uh, let's do it even more slash pin slash ls minus l uh, some foo and bar if this is my command I want to run, I simply pass this command as a string and the operating system will launch it. Uh, what it returns to me is a process ID, which is simply an integer, which internally is really a thread ID, but we think of it as a process ID because 
processes are a user level abstraction okay so so what does exec really do in fact we will actually write this code it will be pretty straightforward because what exec does as we will see when we implement our system calls is exec eventually after all its thing will end up calling the same process execute but process execute is not accessible to a user so you the user doesn't call process execute but the user calls exec accesses a system call the processing of the system call eventually involves calling process execute so so the syscall handler the syscall handler will will in turn call process execute exec calls syscall handler syscall handler calls process execute so uh, so in other words process execute is our only way to launch a new process whether it directly by the operating system or indirectly by the user via a system call so let's take a look at what we mean by uh, by process what process execute really does so uh, let's go back here uh, we'll actually look at our let's go back one step and we will find ourselves in user prog uh, user prog and we'll find out where this routine called process execute is and it's in this file called process.c So we'll go down to where process execute is. Process execute is in fact the very first routine here. Uh, and what it does in a nutshell, as we will see is, as I said, it creates a thread and the, the creation of the thread is itself uh, will, will entail uh, doing all of the stuff that I talked about, that is setting up the address space, creating, connecting this to a to an actual kernel thread, and then loading it into into memory, and then setting up the arguments on the stack, and then calling a return from interrupt so that main gets executed. So so we'll get we'll go through all these details, and the details are are are. The, the are easy to get to once we see the, the high level picture. So, so for now, uh, we'll focus mainly on how a program, how a process gets launched. Um, so we'll focus on two things. So um, we need to set up the address space. Well, actually there's not much to do in terms of setting an address space. Most of the code is given to us. Uh, your responsibility, uh, which is in, in user prog, uh, in this, in project three, your main responsibility as far as setting up the address space is concerned is to, to take care of the stack. So put arguments on the stack. So let's understand how this works. So the big picture is this, when a user program is executed, so if I want to launch a user program, and we, we know this from our, from our uh, understanding user programs. So if there's a user program, the user program usually has a main with an argc and an argv. And you guys remember that argc is an integer, and this is a character star star argv which in other words it's an array of strings and this is just an integer that's that's our signature so so what we ought to do and this is simply the way uh way x86 calling convention works so the x86 calling convention is simply this that is when when we make a call uh when a function call um what what we do is when we call a call a function, it doesn't matter whether it's this function or any other function. If I have a function and this function takes three arguments, one, two, and three, let's say it takes three arguments. The way I'm gonna call this function is I will put on the stack the, the arguments three, two, one, like that, and the return address and the stack pointer which is for us esp is going to point it that's i do that 
and I transfer control to the function. And when I transfer con control to the function, the function will retrieve the parameters, the three parameters that it needs, and then it gets its inputs. So what we ought to do in order for us to eventually launch a program is we will set the, and we will, by the way, the EIP is the, is the, uh, is what we call as a PC. PC will be set to wherever your function, this is the function's implementation. Um, and so we will set the EIP to that and we'll set the stack pointer to that. And when control comes here, the, the arguments are, are taken by, by position. Um, and then the, then we, um, then the control when we finish here that we get the return address so wherever the call is made from so if this is the call that was made uh, from here we came here and so the eip was set to that we finish this call and when we return from it we get the return address and come back so what all this means to us is when a process is loaded into memory its virtual address looks address space looks like this we have uh, the code part uh, the heap part and the stack the stack grows up the heap grows this way and this is the operating system and this is our fizz base uh, which in in pintos and on x86 will be the address 0x c 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 this is called our fizz base which is a constant that's declared in pintos and and so when we when we pass our argument so when we call our main and main has arg c and arg v what we will be doing is we will be putting our uh, in for following the x86 calling convention we will put our argc argv and the return address on the stack. But the interesting thing is that argc is, argc is just a number, so it'll take, it's an integer, so it'll take 32 bits. But argv is actually a pointer. It's a pointer, remember, it's a pointer to a, an array of strings because it's a character star star so the data type of that is a character star star it's a pointer to a to an array of strings and that is just an integer so where do we put these pointers well it turns out the point the the actual pointers of the strings themselves are also here the strings themselves are also here so this might not make sense to you. So uh, just by looking at it. So let's let's try and understand this uh, by taking an actual example. So say we have uh, a program we want to launch, and let's take a simple example of a program that runs ls minus l with a foo. Actually, uh, let's take. So let's take an example to demonstrate this. Let's say we have a program um, that we want to run. Actually, let's run a program that says slash bin slash ls minus l foo bar. Let's say this is the program we want to launch. So what should we set up on the stack uh, for us to be able to push, to make this happen? Remember that this, if this were a program that, that the LS program I'm running, it's going to have one, two, three arguments. And this is argv of zero. 
and this is argv of 1, argv of 2, and that's an argv of 3. So we have to pass all these to the program. So here's how it's actually going to work. So I'm going to first uh, show you the, the full view of the, of the stack, and then I'll walk you through it. So, so this is our fizz base which is the bottom of our stack. So this is, uh, um, the, this kernel, kernel is below, below this is all kernel space, below this is kernel. And so the first addressable region on the stack is, um, and I'm writing four bytes at a time. So the first addressable region of the stack is this address, which is at zero X B F F F F F F F. So that's the first byte. So the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna put all these strings on the stack first. So that's my B A R and that's the null termination because every string is automatically null terminated. So that's my null termination. So the very first one you see is this string. So which is here followed by the slash zero, which is the null. And, and then the next, next string is foo which is uh, let's say this string right here and this string is stored right there at starting at address 8, 9, A and B and so that's a C, D, E and F and the next one which is the minus L which is this guy from here to here is this one right here and the remaining, which is happens to be uh, happens to be slash bin slash ls, which is this entire thing, is this one right here. At this point, we end at an address. So let's just mark what this address is. So this address here happens to be a zero x b f f f f f e so that's an e c that's an e d so that's an e d now the 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 thing that we will we will notice is um, after we put all our strings on the stack we're gonna put a null termination so this is our null termination by the way though we don't say it when we when we actually uh, pass, uh, you you might remember this from writing your yash that there is an implicit fourth argument or arg argv of four, which is the null pointer. So because the strings are null terminated, so this is going to be a null pointer. So pointers, all these pointers in x eighty six pointers must be stored at addresses address addresses that are word aligned that simply means that you can't have a null pointer go for example you can't have a null pointer start here and end here which is what it would have happened if I were to put a null pointer, which is 32 bits, uh, start ending here uh, and it has to be 32 bits, it would take up those. You can't have that, that's not allowed. So what we need to do is we need to re start fresh. So we need to do this addition here, this, this byte here needs to be added. This is called the padding. We add a padding so that the next address starts at uh, or can start at a multiple of uh, four, which is basically what aligned addresses, word aligned addresses are. So it can start at eight and it can go there. So this null pointer then, which is our, uh, let's take another. So this null pointer now can be right here and that's our null pointer. So that's our first null pointer. So the next one we see is argv of c. But argv of c is simply a pointer to, and I'm gonna mark this. This is a pointer to, which is an bffffc, which by the way, x86 is, 
let's make a note of this x86 is big endian which means that addresses are written uh, kind of backwards if you will so uh, 4 has this 5 has this 6 has this and uh, uh, 7 has that and so it's really read as bf ff ff fc but it's written backwards that's what a big endian format looks like so our first pointer which is this pointer is pointing to this address right here which is exactly that and the second one which happens to be uh, the the string foo is being pointed to right there that is our fff8 which is what that is and then the next one which is our ff4 and this is 5 which means that this 5 is pointing to right there and i'm trying to draw them around so i can uh, not oh, erase too much and the next one uh, which is our, our slash bin ls is is at a d which happens to be this address i'm going to go around here and which happens to be that address right there which happens to be the d which we set so that completes our array array of arg0 argv arg1 but the interesting thing is we still need an argv and you know from from uh, your basics in c that an that argv just we know that argv is nothing but the address of argv of zero this is just a c c way of looking at arrays arrays are there is no such thing as a array uh, arrays are simply implemented as pointers and the pointer that it points to is the address of the first element of my array so which means that argv itself which is this guy right here should be the address of where argv of zero is and argv of zero's address and this is where i'm gonna let's see if i can use a different color but it doesn't matter so this is our argv and argv is at eight and argv itself is pointing to the address of argv of zero which happens to be that address right there that's the eight address and we're done with our argv and now we have argc which is four because we have four arguments on it and then and then um, the return address in some sense what what the programmer really is doing for all really is doing is only interested in these three things because that's the argv the args argv argc and the return address it just so happens that the argv um, needs to be pointing to things and the things it points to also are sitting on the stack i hope that explains it so when you're programming this is the idea that you're going to be following